Our last area of study in our review of Algebra 1 concepts is absolute value equations and inequalities. And we're going to begin with a definition. As a reminder, absolute value means the distance from zero. And that is all this is, is we are figuring out how far something is away. Now distance, in a mathematical sense, is always a positive number. You might be five feet ahead or five feet behind, but either way you are five feet away. Now another word that is used often for absolute value is magnitude, which simply compares how big something is compared to another item. So if we're looking at the absolute value of a, a number or an a variable, then we're talking about how far that one is away from a point of reference. Typically that point of reference is zero, but it can change depending on the situation. Now when it's time to write absolute value, what we do is we put two vertical lines, and whatever we're taking the absolute value of, say the variable a, goes in between those. Now in the end, we're going to have a positive number come out because like I said po uh, absolute value or distance is always positive but what that does not mean is that we change what's inside there in process example if I have the absolute value of x plus 3 that is going to be different than the absolute value of x minus 3 a lot of people see that negative inside the absolute value and say oh nothing inside of absolute value can be negative so they change it to a positive but it's different values here. So you do what's inside of that grouping symbol first, and then you do what the grouping symbol tells you to. So we would simplify the expression inside, and then we would take the absolute value of the result. So let's go through the process of solving some equations and inequalities that involve absolute value, and work on graphing them. The graphs, if we're solving equations, are going to be individual points if we are solving inequalities, then it will be similar to an and or situation that we were working with in our last lesson. So we're going to solve the absolute value of x plus 3 equals 7. Now our first step in solving this is to isolate our absolute value symbol. Since it is already by itself, that step is taken care of. Next, What's inside of that absolute value is 7 units away from 0, since we are working with a 7 over here. That means what's inside of here has two choices. It can be either a positive 7 or a negative 7. Either way, it is 2 units away from 0. So, we break it up into two equations. We say x plus 3 equals 7, or x plus 3 equals a negative 7. And now we need to solve these two individually. So left hand side I'm going to subtract 3 these are my properties of equality x equals 4. On my right hand side I'm going to subtract 3 again using properties of equality and I come out with x equals negative 10. So according to this I have two possible solutions x can be 4 or x can be a negative 10. We need to check each one. So absolute value of 4 plus 3 is supposed to equal 7. So that's the absolute value of 7 is supposed to be 7. And how far is 7 from 0? We get 7 equals 7. So that checks out. Now right hand side, the absolute value of negative 10 plus 3 is supposed to equal 7. Negative 10 plus 3 is a negative 7 and that is supposed to be 7. The absolute value of negative 7, how far is it from 0? Well, it's 7 units to the left, so that equals 7, and it checks out. So we need to graph these two points, x equals 4 and x equals negative 10, on our number line. So let's put a scale on there, and we get these numbers. Now, plotting our points, x equals 4, so we put a point at 4, or x equals negative 10, we put a point and negative 10. And it is just those two points. It's not what's to the left, to the right, or in between. It is just those individual items. Now let's work with a slightly more complicated one here on the right. So we have 6 times a quantity of the absolute value 5 minus 2x plus 3 equals 21. Our first order of business is to isolate the absolute value. So we're going to subtract 3 from each side. 
and we get 6 times 5 minus 2x equals 18. Divide by 6, and we come out with the absolute value of 5 minus 2x equals 3. So that means what's inside of that absolute value is either a positive or negative 3. So we're going to explore both. We have 5 minus 2x equals 3, or 5 minus 2x equals a negative 3. Now we're going to solve both individually. Subtract 5. I get negative 2x equals negative 2. So now, dividing both sides by negative 2, I get x equals 1. Other side, I'm going to subtract 5 from both right and left. Using my properties of equality, I have negative 2x equals negative 8. Dividing by negative 2 on both sides, I come out with x equals 4. So now I should go back and check both of these, but I'm a little bit compressed on space, so I'm going to have to abbreviate my check. So going through and simplifying, 2 times 1 is 2, 5 minus 2 is 3, 6 times 3 is 18, plus 3 is 21, and that checks out. Right hand side, 2 times 4 is 8, 5 minus 8 is negative 3. The absolute value of negative 3 is 3, which times 6 is 18, plus 3 is 21. So that checks out using my order of operations. So I need to plot the points 1 and 4 on my number line. So going through and doing that, 0, 2, 4, 6, and 8. And my points are simply x equals 1 and x equals 4. Either of those will work. And again, it is just the points, not the regions on either side or between them. Let's take a look. So if we have the absolute value of 6x plus 4 equals 8x plus 10, first thing, we need to isolate our absolute value, which we have. Now when we go to break this up following what an absolute value is, we're going to have something a little bit different. We will end up with 6x plus 4 equals 8x plus 10, or 6x plus 4 has to equal the opposite of that, so that would be a negative 8x minus 10. Now we need to solve these individually. And we're going to do that following our solving order of operations, sad meg. We're going to subtract 6x from each side. On the left, we get 4 equals 2 plus 10x. Uh, sorry, 2x plus 10. Subtract 10 using property of equality. Get negative 6 equals 2x. Divide by 2, so x is negative 3. Right-hand side, we're going to do the same thing. Thing. Actually, we're going to do it a little bit differently. We're going to add 8x to each side. That way I don't have to work with negatives. I get 14x plus 4 equals negative 10. Subtract 4. Come out with 14x is a negative 14. So divided by 14x would be a negative 1. Now, before I plot these, I need to go through and check them. So... I have the absolute value of 6 times negative 3 plus 4 equals 8 times negative 3 plus 10. And we think that's equal. So we get the absolute value of negative 18 plus 4 is supposed to be negative 24 plus 10. Now, left hand side, absolute value of a negative 14 is supposed to be equaling negative 14. Take the absolute value on the left-hand side, I get 14 is equal to a negative 14, and that is not true. And we'll go back and talk about that here in a minute. So, right-hand side, let's check this one. Absolute value of 6 times negative 1 plus 4 is supposed to equal 8 times negative 1 
plus 10. So left hand side absolute value of negative 6 plus 4 is supposed to equal negative 8 plus 10. Left hand side's absolute value of negative 2 is supposed to be equal to 2. Absolute value of negative 2 is 2, so we have 2 equals 2 and that works. So what we have here is a situation that occurs when you're dealing with groups and special operations such as absolute values, square root, squaring, where you do all the math accurately but the answer that you get when you put it back into the original equation through substitution does not work anymore. This is called an extraneous solution. And what that simply means is extra. So our math was correct. However, because one side of our, inequal one side of our equation has an equal sign and the other one does not, or sorry, one side of our equation is absolute value and the other is not, we get an answer that just doesn't work. So in the end, this equation has only one solution. That important point is 2. So we put it on our graph and we plot the point. Oh, sorry, it's actually negative 1. 2 was what we came out as our answer. Negative 1 is our answer. So we plot that point, and that is our only answer. Negative 3 is not a valid solution, so we do not graph it. Extraneous solutions will be coming up through our study of Algebra 2, so it's important to get this concept down. Now let's take a look at absolute value inequalities, looking like, in the end, is and or inequalities like we were just studying in our last lesson. So. When you are dealing with absolute value inequalities, this is also similar to concepts of tolerance. If you've ever worked in a mechanics field or on constructing something, a lot of times they'll say that you need to tighten a bolt or a nut to a certain level with a little bit of give and take. So it might be five foot pounds, give or take one. So if you're less than four, it's too loose. If you're over six, if you're over six foot pounds, it might break it but there is a little bit of give in between. So let's go through and solve this. If you ever have where your absolute value is less than another number, what that means is we have two situations here. We have 2x plus 3 is less than 9, just like we were thinking, and then we have 2x plus 3 is greater than negative 9. And the reason for that is we multiplied our right-hand side by a negative number, and any time you multiply by a negative, you change the direction. Well, we can be less than 9 and greater than negative 9 at the same time, so this is an and. Any time you're dealing with absolute value inequalities, your absolute value is less than another reference number, it's automatically an and. Now going through and solving, we subtract 3, you get 2x is less than 6. Divide by 2, we have x is less than 3. Right hand side, subtract 3. Come out with 2x is greater than a negative 12. Dividing by 2, we have x is greater than a negative 6. So, put this onto our number line. We come out with our number line looking like this. So we're at negative 6 an open circle and we're at positive 3 which again is an open circle and what we're looking at with this inequality is everything in between so we color in everything in between now the opposite is going to work differently we have the absolute value of 2x minus 5 is greater than 1 what this means is what's inside there needs to be more than one unit away from 0 so we take it we have 2x minus 5 is greater than 1 or 2x minus 5 is less than a negative 1. Now solving these individually we add 5 get 2x is greater than 6 divided by 2x is greater than 3 or we add 5 to both sides 
using addition property of inequalities, you get 2x is less than 4. Dividing by 2, we have x is less than 2. So on our number line here, we're going to put our scale. At 2, we have an open circle. At 3, we have an open circle. And what we're looking at is items that are less than 2. So it's going to be from 2 to the left. Or items that are greater than 3. So that's going to be from the 3 circle going to the right. So absolute value inequalities. If our absolute value is less than, it's and. If our absolute value is greater than, we get or. This will be our last item for review. After this, we're moving forward into new concepts for Algebra 2.